In this video, I'm going to talk about semi-partial correlations in the context of conducting and interpreting a multiple regression analysis. As I mentioned in the textbook, I think it's probably one of the best ways to evaluate the importance of a predictor in a multiple regression. So I'll just point out that in SPSS, you would go into Analyze Regression Linear and conduct the regression analysis as you would typically with your independent variables in the blocks, and then click on Statistics and make sure that you have part and partial correlation selected. Part in SPSS refers to semi-partial correlation, and it's actually a type A semi-partial correlation. I talk about type A and type B semi-partial correlations in the chapter devoted to semi-partial and partial correlations, so I encourage you to check that out. In this case, it's type A semi-partial correlations, which is the type of semi-partial correlation you'd want. So then you click on OK, and SPSS runs the analysis. I'm just going to go to the output relevant to the part correlations or semi-partial type A correlations. So here we've got for the education variable, it had a standardized beta weight of 0.232 which was statistically significant and it's associated with a semi-partial correlation of 0.19. So the semi-partial correlation in this case is numerically lower than the standardized beta weight. And an important attribute associated with a semi-partial correlation is that you can square it and speak of percentage of variance accounted for. You can't do that with a standardized beta weight. So in this case, I've got 0.19, and I can square that and get 0.0361, and multiply that by 100, and I get 3.61. So 3.61% of the variance in earnings was accounted for uniquely by education. Now it's important to say uniquely because the zero order correlation is bigger than the semi-partial correlation. The zero order correlation is the plain ordinary association between education and earnings, and you'd expect it to be larger than the semi-partial correlation because there's shared variance between education and IQ. So 3.61% of the variance was accounted for uniquely by education in this multiple regression. Next, IQ has a semi-partial correlation of 0.143. So let's look at that one, 0.143 squared times 100, and I get 2.04% of the variance in earnings was accounted for by IQ independently of the effects of education. So it's a unique effect. Each one of these semi-partial correlations represent unique effects Partial correlations can be potentially interesting in some cases, but I don't think it's appropriate in the context of a multiple regression. It's more appropriate to interpret the semi-partial correlations, which, re which SPSS refers to as part correlations. Now, once you square the semi-partial correlations, you can sum them together in order to estimate the unique effects associated with the independent variables, and then subtract that from the total R squared. So let's do that. In this case here, it was 3.61. The first variable was associated with 3.61 plus 2.04. I've just added the percentage of variance associated with each of the unique effects, and that amounts to 5.65. Now if we look at the R squared, that is actually 0.13. If you multiply it by 100, you get 13%. So 13 minus 5.65 equals 7.35. And that 7.35 corresponds to the percentage of variance that education and IQ predicted in combination with respect to predicting earnings. So that's what they did as a team, if you want to think about it that way. Together, they share variance. And as a team, that shared variance predicted in this multiple regression 7.35% of the variance in earnings. And then the unique effects combined amounted to 5.65% of the variance. And then when you break it down individually, education was 3.61% of the variance, and IQ was 2.04% of the variance. This is the benefit of looking at the semi-partial correlations in the context of multiple regression, is that you get to talk about those percentage of variances and talk about unique effects and combined effects. Now that is a basic approach to evaluating the unique and shared predictive capacity of the predictive variables in the multiple regression. You can do things a little bit more sophisticatedly if you consider doing a relative weights analysis or a commonality analysis. 
And I demonstrate both of them in this chapter, and I encourage you to check them out if you want to get a little bit more sophisticated about this approach to evaluating a multiple regression.